Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here and it is a Thursday and I haven't been on YouTube for a few days, been busy with many things. I just recently got a private message and again, like I said before, don't make these technical questions private, post them publicly. Go to a video that I have, I have over 500, almost 550 videos now find a subject matter that matches what you're trying to ask about and ask it right there so that people can see what you are talking about because as we dialogue back and forth a lot of folks will benefit since these are very basic questions people keep asking and basically what i end up doing is just repeating myself over and over and over there are lots of videos on there covering many different subjects and many different types of printers this one in particular is about the Canon Pro 100, the most popular printer out there because they've made it so easy to access for just a little bit of money after you get your rebate back. And so basically it goes like this. A lot of people have questions about the printer itself using say ICC profiles with it, printing on the printer driver by itself, um, switching over to refillable carts, and of course, refillable carts are not recommended. You should really refill your own OEM carts. Cartridge management, should I get a second set of carts? How should I go about doing that? Should I buy a brand new set of OEM carts or should I look for someone who's selling empties? And so on, all of that is answered. Flushing, how to flush the yellow cart, how to refill these, how you determine if they are dry to the proper weight, all of that has been covered in many videos. It's all there, folks. So before you ask a lot of these questions, just do a little search in my Pro 100 playlist. I don't mean to sound like I don't want to answer you, but it's just repetition and it's just becoming a chore sometimes. But I hope you forgive me for that. Here's a question from an individual. And there's so many good questions and points here that I wanted to make a video covering this because I want you guys to publicly hear this and possibly, I hope, benefit from the answers I will attempt to give. So obviously, brand new at photo printing, just bought himself the new Pixma Pro 100. And I don't know whether he is in the United States or overseas, say in the UK area or Europe, but I will try to answer everything he has asked here. And I'll just read it verbatim and then we'll go point by point. So I've been watching several of your videos as I purchased a Pixma Pro 100. They have been very helpful, thanks. I'm planning to go the refilling with precision colors route. I do have a question. In your videos you mentioned several times for a second set of carts. I am going to be one of those stubborn people as I really want to only use CLI 42 and not CLI 8s. So I'm going to purchase a set of dried out CLI 42 carts. Yeah, that's one way to go and you will be sure that you will get chips along with those carts. At this point, I think, I'm not entirely sure, Precision Colors is selling CLI 42 carts, but without chips. And they have been already modified and flushed for you. So what you might want to do to just make life easier and not have to worry about flushing is to buy a set of these pre-flushed, pre-modified carts and then just swap the chip from your dried up ones. You may or may not be successful at flushing them out. Okay, and in some cases, it is desirable that you do so. But most often, you don't really have to 100% flush them till they're pure, pristine, snow white. You don't really have to do that except for yellow. And we'll touch on that in a bit. Okay, so I have, however, heard you mentioned that CLI 42s are difficult to clear for some of the colors and that you have to use PSO flush to clean them. PSO flush is a um, head cleaning compound that's sold by inkjet mall it's very good very effective and i find it extremely good to clear out that last remnant of color out of a sponge 
Remember, the CLI-42 ink set is brand new. It is not like the old CLI-8 dye ink set. So it's very tenacious. And what happens is, if you make the mistake, as thousands of people do, to begin your flushing with water, that's when you run into problems, okay? So what I recommend that you do to get them clean is to begin your flushing with Windex. And Windex is so much cheaper. And it contains ammonia, which works really well to dissolve ink residue. So load up a syringe with Windex. And here is a dried up, truly dried up cart. And it has not been modified. Okay, so I need to modify this cart. But let's use this as, a, as an example. Here's one that indeed has been modified. And I've had the cap on it, but that does not mean that it's not dried. You remove the plug when you're modified, after you modify it, then you will be able to load up a syringe with Windex, insert it into that hole like so, and then push in your Windex. Once your sponge has absorbed a quantity of Windex, let it sit, let it sit for an hour or so, and then begin flushing either with water or with more Windex. If it was a mild uh, condition of dryness, that may be all you need, okay? And so by beginning with this ammonia solution, which is Windex window cleaner with 5% ammonia, you will have a better chance of clearing your cartridges to this condition. And this is what you need to achieve, all right? Let me retract. This is what you need to achieve if you're really, really picky, okay? Often what happens, say you have a cart that you yourself empty. So this is still going to be wet. You probably can simply modify it and just top off the liquid reservoir. And again, refer back to my videos. I go through every detail of that process. And then when you plug it in, let it sit for a while. Leave the vent open. Okay, don't tape that down yet. And this will equalize both chambers. And then you can top off if you need so. If the liquid chamber has dropped, considerably, meaning that the sponge has absorbed as much ink as it can absorb. Then you go ahead and top this off and plug it, okay? And then you will test ink flow by holding it over a paper cup, removing the plug, and you should get drip, 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 drip continuously. If you just wait, you will literally empty out the liquid chamber, okay? So that's how you test. So that's how you test whether the sponge is allowing the proper level of ink flow. With the chamber plugged in and the bottom uncovered without a clip, you should not get any dripping, okay? So that's, that's what you're shooting for. And again, all of this is on my videos. Go to my CLI 42 section and everything will be there. Okay, so we're gonna talk about PSL flush as well as Windex, and also he found a website that sells dried out CLI-42 cartridges, octoinkjet.uk. Well, that's wrong, it's octoinkjet.co.uk, okay? Octoinkjet.co.uk. Base competitor to Precision Colors, and I am about to order some. Is this a good idea? Sure. They're in the UK, so I assume you're here possibly. Yeah, order the set. They will come already, not pro probably not flush and probably not modified for refilling, but at least you will get a set with chips, which is really what you want. And hopefully they will not be too dry. Now, if they are not too dry, you just go ahead and top them off with ink, okay? Whether it's from Octo Inkjet or from Precision Colors. Now, if you buy from Octo Inkjet, Supposedly, you should be able to also top off the yellow original cart. No need to flush it. No need to go to an alternative cartridge, all right? Because there's supposedly is no reaction between OEM yellow and their yellow. Now, Precision Colors, I'm the one that reported that there was a reaction between the two yellows, okay? And it tends to gel up and it causes causes a clog on your yellow channel, which is undesirable. You don't want to have that happen on a thermal printhead. You'll ruin it. All right, so if you're going to order from 
octoinkjet.co.uk. Yes, get the cartridges, get some ink, have it shipped to the United States, or if you're in Europe, then no problem. And then you can just top off your own carts after you modify them, modify their carts as well, top them off, have two sets at the go, ready to go. Now, I see that they also sell flushing solutions, two variants, one for Epson PSO electric systems and another one for HP Canon type thermal based systems. They are both very or pretty expensive, like $12 for 100 ml. But should I get the Epson electric flush or the Canon electric thermal flush? Well, the reason there's two types is very simple. It's because you cannot interchange them, okay? The Canon one has to be used on a Canon. And I suppose you can use the Canon on the, on the Epson because the Epson printhead is not susceptible to, to heat damage like the Canons are. So, but you know what? I would just avoid that completely. Original Windex costs you about $450 for a bottle such as this. You buy it at any grocery store, any drugstore, and you will be good to go. And so just use that. If you really, really are picky and you want to flush out your cart, then use Windex, okay? And for something super, super stubborn, for instance, one scenario would be that you try to flush your yellow cart, your yellow cart, and it doesn't flush out completely because you used water at first. So that immediately begins that process of gelling out the yellow into your sponge and then it just simply will not dissolve with water. If that's the case, an hour, two hours, three hours, maybe a day's worth of flushing with Windex will completely clear it out and you will end up with a yellow card that is this white. Okay, And you can be assured that there's no more yellow residue in there. So begin your yellow flushing, original yellow card flushing with Windex. Let it sit, let it do its job and then flush out with Windex, not water yet, flush out with Windex, let it sit again, and then finish by flushing out with warm water. And at the end, you can use my special rejuvenation fluid that I did a demonstration on a couple of videos worth a while ago. Look that up and you will see how that's done and the formula for that as well. Okay, so now he wants to know, since you have had success with PSO Flush, I'm curious of which one to get, or should I just get PSO Flush? It's about the same price. Depending on which one, should I get two bottles, 100 ml to flush? No, again, like I said, you don't need to do that, okay? Just use Windex Ammonia and you're good to go. Again, if you still insist on removing every single molecule of the previous ink out of that sponge, then sure, get yourself a smallish bottle of PSO Flush. It's not that expensive when you consider you will only use about 10, 15 ml at a time. All right. And then he finishes with what he says. It's a very dumb question. You mentioned that nasties that grow in the ink over time. Will I be able to tell if things start growing in my refilled carts or bottles if I let them sit too long? Can I refrigerate them or is that a horrible, horrible idea? Well, how long do you think you're going to let them sit? You know, I expect that you, as a Pro 100 owner, especially refilling, will be printing their heart's content almost daily. That's the reason we go to refilling systems because it lowers the cost of ink so much that now we have no excuse not to print. All right. So, sure, here's the deal. When you buy dye inks, they come with a biocide included in the liquid base. In other words, the liquid clear base onto which dyes are added to create that particular color. So the biocide's job is to prevent external contaminants that you introduce yourself every time you poke a needle into that bottle, all right? So from the time you open it, six months, and you're good to go. After six months, then you start, you know, the biocide has a half-life, and so it starts to lose its effectiveness and then possibly you could have fungus growing and fungus will immediately clog a thermal head and burn it. So order as much ink as you will use in six months. You will never have that problem. Some people criticize me for saying six months is too, too short a time. Well, whatever you say, follow my recommendation. 
I don't recommend anything. I haven't experienced myself. Okay, so take that with a grain of salt. And uh, yes, I have experienced that. I have gone through uh, several printheads on my Canon printers due to my incompetency. And now I know better. So I'm passing out that information to you guys so that you don't have to go through that. So if you need to just only buy two ounces, then just buy two ounces. Believe me, it only takes about once you get this ready to go and the sponge is completely saturated, you let the liquid portion go down to uh, the bottom. That will then activate the optical prism. It will tell the printer that, hey, I am low. It sends a signal to your driver and the driver illustrates on your computer that you have one cart low. At that point, remove that whole set, replace it with a brand new refilled reset set of carts and continue. At that rate, you should be able to easily go through two ounces of ink along those eight colors easily. And again, remember that inks are used at extremely different varying rates. So you're not gonna use up those eight bottles of ink equally. There's always gonna be remnants. So, and I know that buying it in larger volumes is cheaper per ml, but consider the fact that you will then be storing ink, and if you don't have the proper conditions to store ink, then you are in trouble. What I recommend that you do is if you choose to buy ink in larger volumes, say four ounce bottles, then buy a set of these little bottles with these needles, okay? That way, you're not inserting needles anywhere near that liquid. The only thing you're doing is expelling liquid. And before you use this, you get a, an alcohol swab, and you clean the needle, insert it into the cartridge, and fill. And that's all you have to do. Contamination will be reduced to minimal, so you won't even have to worry at all about any contaminants. So that's what I recommend you do. And remember, six months, eight months at the max, you should be able to go through a set of inks that you order. And that way you will not have any problems with the nasties, as he calls them. Okay, and usually on pigment type inks, that does not occur only on dyes because a lot of the third party dye inks are kind of organic based type dyes. So, unlike the most expensive OEM inks, which are synthetic dyes and extremely expensive to produce, most third party dye inks are organic and so they will allow contaminants if you if you introduce enough contaminants in there they will overwhelm the biocide and begin to grow and that's when you will run into problems all right now very quickly i have a set of carts here i just want to go through this really really fast because i don't want to make this too long i tend to do that often so i have a little scale here if you choose to flush your cartridges and then you use my method of wicking the moisture out, watch that in my video, you should end up at about 13 and a half grams total weight. That's without any plug, without any uh, clip on the base of it, all right? Here's another one. This one still has the factory plug. Whoever sold me this decided to just simply drill a hole. That's wrong, don't do that. Remove the ball properly and then ream that out to five 30 seconds diameter. That way it will accept a plug and ensure perfect sealing of that chamber. This one is 13.59, almost 13.6 grams. So that's a little bit more weight because of that ball still existing in there. And this is with a plug and a double plug because he not only drilled it and then I went ahead and removed the ball because I don't like that situation. This is 13.98, almost 14 grams. All right, so here's a dried up one. This is, the person ran it dry, waited until the indicator said it was empty. 15.23 grams, okay? And it still has the factory ball. It has not been modified at all. And then here is one that is also dried up, modified with a plug. And this one is 16.68. So what this tells me is that this sponge is still a little bit wetter than this one. It contains actually more ink than this one does. This one is, we'll round it off at 16.6. 
and this one is 15.25 so there you go and as you can see I just got some ink on me so it still uh, has a little bit of wetness in it this can probably very likely just be uh, refilled right off the bat without any flushing okay the only ones you have to worry about is the yellow one and again when you flush the yellow if you want to take that step and be brave about it go ahead and flush it with Windex first do not allow any water to enter come into contact with that sponge Windex flush about 30 60 ml of Windex right through it and you will see all that yellow ink just pour right out of the bottom vent in that way you then apply a plug or a clip plug the top and let it sit and then when you flush it again it will literally clear it all out and look like this and that's what you want to achieve and then you let it dry until it's about 13 and a half grams and then you plug the bottom up with a clip and begin to load your PC or uh, Octo Inkjet uh, yellow ink and again Octo Inkjet claims that you do not have to flush a yellow card with their ink use so that is it I hope this answers everybody's questions I wish I could make this a sticky that would be the first video you see when you enter my channel so that you will not have to just keep asking the same thing all over again not that I mind it's great for my uh, you know traffic but uh, again this is information that is just general about P Pro 100s throughout and so that is what I'm trying to do make things easy for you guys and keep you from committing silly mistakes all of them I have made of course all right so that is it I hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and share as always and until the next time guys happy printing bye bye